Do you know this awkward feeling when you look back and something isn't right? And some minutes later you look back once more and you figure something is totally insane. Let me take you on a trip. A little awkward trip. Welcome back again to the latest and greatest, I hope, <laughs> or just uh, clicked some random walk snail stuff. In this episode I will try to uh, narrate you through uh, some footage I've got here and you're seeing currently where we just analyze the effect of changed antennas um, compared um, to the, or changed antennas on the VTX compared to the default ones coming with the walk snail kit. Excuse my crappy voice. Uh... <laughs> My throat isn't that good currently, but well, it gives me a bit, a little more uh, bass in my sound, I guess. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. I guess it's getting better over time. <clears throat> Anyways, back to what I wanted to tell. Flight in this uh, video, I remember or recall it to be 700 milliwatts. Uh, the new antennas from HLG, HLGRC, the long range hammers and uh, standard bit rate of 25 megabits per second as well as 1080p 60 and uh, well 700 milliwatts output power i guess i said already well that's all there is to tell uh, we're all set and off we are i remember saying in the last video that altitude is your friend depending upon what range you want to achieve the t1 in this video tries not to go too high and is uh, pretty low for the range it tries to achieve so no fancy heights to uh, to compensate on reception nothing at all I just say this because some people always freak out when they see clouds in the videos and think oh my gosh where the heck did you go this time and honestly it didn't go anywhere it just was those morning clouds are like fog and wasn't high at all you can see the ground clearly and everything in between no panic please ladies and gents what you see here is a chart it don't take me as the one who draws the charts and is mostly exactly on what he does so it's just a basic chart, uh, chart to uh, visualize what i have observed in my videos i've seen <coughs> so you can see there's a there's a uh, axis called megabits per second which we have uh, 0, 5, 12 and 25. I don't go up to 50 megabits per second, you may, but you'll encounter the same, I guess. And then we got another one, it's called distance in kilometers. <coughs> um, you can take it in your, um, well, feet or miles or whatever you want, it's all the same, doesn't matter. And it's not exact, it's just above the sub, just like I feel like it. So, zero here, and you can see we got those. Why do we have this? Because usually we start out here, and all of a sudden, Voxnell switches down in the half of it, about 12 11 megabits per second, and suddenly over time, you drop down to five or even below that, and you're done. That's the fact <coughs> in my flights, in my observations. Now, I don't know about uh, you and how you experience that. For me, it's like that. Have a look at it when you fly. So, let's go in for the first antennas, the default walk snail antennas and 700 milliwatts of, uh, well, output power. So you can see here, it starts up pretty nice at 25 as expected and all of a sudden here, in between the first two kilometers, it just drops down and uh, stays at 12 until it then drops down again somewhere here and uh, uh, more or less ends maximal, uh, at ma maximum 4 kilometers at 700 milliwatts. Um, Walksnell is claiming to go for 4 kilometers, that's okay, I guess this is proof. And uh, I don't know how you experience that, if you experience that, try it out, give me a feedback on that in the comments if you like. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but it uh, doesn't matter at this point because um, you've seen in the previous video I've been further, or the plane in this video has been further. So we will go over to that. Um, just stating that 700 milliwatts and the default 
antennas on the Walksdale receiver or VTX seem not to be that good because here we go again if we go over and raise the output power to about 1200 milliamp what we not are allowed to do of course um, then you can see this axis these bars they just change you cut further out and suddenly drop down again and you go here about let's say it's four or five kilometers drop down to five and just uh, fiddle around here about twi uh, five and twelve per second and uh, finally drop it here at 8.1 in that flight you've seen in the previous video so yeah there is something about the output power but <clears throat> doesn't seem to impact that really good because they are dropping pretty fast aren't they they are now um, I've came up with the idea I have to switch antennas because some guy just said ah, you have to do this I said nah and they said mm. and then I researched uh, some I did some researching and I found out yes of course he was right and uh, so I did I ordered some HGLRC long-range hammer antennas and placed it on the T1 T1 flew as you have seen by now at um, upper power 700 milliwatts and you can see the picture changes exactly as unexpected as it should be because uh, I would have thought well yeah um, if it is Walksnail itself then it will die the same way but it didn't it didn't not at all because it just went out here and then uh, first of all range at uh, four kilometers it just switched down to half the output power uh, output data down to 12 megabits per second which is pretty nice because that indicates that there's so much more in store for us if we just put some better antennas on top and so we did so it flew on with those 12 megabits per second until we reached about 5.7 kilometers and then it just got well disconnected not disconnected but it got its issues and went down to zero and that's where I say well that's the range of chart it, it, it achieved and um, it didn't flew that high <clears throat> you see uh, that flight was higher far higher but this is not the same you see the behavior is completely different and better and now it's getting awkward ladies and gents look at my hatch it's open and why is that i don't know i didn't figure out at that point i was distracted by the birds and now the t1 really 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 can, is getting strange uh, handling very strange speed down to zero almost stalling and i need to power up to just compensate and get it right because i don't know what's happening and why it is so strange now but uh, we'll find out in a second If I may place an educated guess, I would assume the rear hatch to have ripped off and the front hatch is hanging, dangling on the rear fin. Antennas are just went down. Uh, well, yeah, um, that's not good. That's absolutely not good. No. What I originally wanted to show you was uh, how, uh, how good better antennas or other antennas but the defaults might be and um, if, we have, uh, if you have seen the footage by now you know this ended up not so well but not because of the antennas but uh, because uh, we had some technical issues with the hatch which uh, survived by the others the other one got lost so let me uh, transition you over to the next project where we will as promised test something with more range slightly different than 
I thought it would be like. The new test rig for the next flight will be the Harrier. The Harrier is capable of far more things, uh, first of all, carrying bigger, bigger batteries. And uh, as we already has, uh, have, uh, well, uh, transformed this to be a digital plane now, although it still can do analog, um, I want to fix something. And I got those antennas, as I maybe have shown you in the last video. Yes, I have. You see these ones. And they are, why did I pick these? I picked, I picked these because um, they are, um, fairly cheap and you can get them and pretty long. The problem with them is if you mount them to such a plane like the Harrier and you want to make everything right and you saw all of a sudden figure out something is missing uh, because the cord of the antenna ripped off. Might be because it was in the crash, might be because I'm clumsy, but first of all this means we can't fly this antenna because, well, it's not a wireless one, you know? Right, away with it. I've bought new ones. Uh, some Chinese people will be very happy about my order. Uh, and we're going to get back to this again, to the standard of our time. <coughs> Walk snail antennas, just to make it right. So let me switch this the third time now and stuff it into the Harrier. And then I'll show you more about how I want to check the range. So what basically happened while I waited for the new stuff from China and my new order was that my dear friend and partner in crime, Crockle Floop, you know him perhaps, so generous to help me out with the antennas from Truercy. And uh, at this point, a big thanks and shout out to you mate, so thanks a lot. And um, as out of that I fetched some uh, triple feed patches uh, from China as well. And so my rig is what you see now. This is what I have on the head while I'm flying Walksnail. And all of a sudden, some 10 days later, everything had happened and I wasn't flying at all. I didn't get anywhere with my crap. Yeah, uh, here we come. Here's a new shipment. Yes, yes, yes. New antennas and receivers. No, transmitters. And of course a new hatch. This time, and this time it was about to game on, because we could just equip the thing with the new antennas and those lollipop things and give it a go. And uh, here is how it went. Have a look at the antennas. Those antennas will really perform, and they are not uh, the most expensive ones. Well, the important is that they are separated a good uh, distance from each other, because otherwise they will eat the signal of each other. I tried this before, I didn't went good, didn't go so good. And yes, um, I've just uh, rescued the hatch <laughs> this time. Well, that's it for now. I'm shutting down and uh, narrate the rest. Bringing us to the next chart and the latest uh, measurement in that case, and that was those no-name lollipops uh, just put on top on the T1 Ranger. And now, hold your hats ladies and gents, hold your hats, uh, this changed entirely and again. <clears throat> because there are some things you have to be aware of, and that's antenna placement and, well, the choice of your antennas. Um, the long range hammers uh, are surely the same quality as the no name lollipops, but just, uh, um, well, didn't work out because of you know what, it didn't work out. <laughs> so, and the latest uh, measurement of the T1, uh, it has been cruising out for about uh, four and a half kilometer before it dropped down to 12 and a half megabits per second. <coughs> what I'm ramming, 12 megabits per second, four and a half kilometers and gen it kept this level pretty much. Suddenly at uh, almost about six kilometers and went up back again to 25 megabits per second. So yeah, there's something in between and I will um, tell you about what it could be, this gap here. Then it dropped down again and kept the level of 12 megabits per second and uh, Finally, then somewhere here at eight and a half kilometers, it went down to about uh, five megabits per second, and somewhere in between, it just dropped out because there was some 
noise perhaps or whatever and, and then get back up again on its feet at 11 megabits per second it kept it until it just uh, dangled up and down pretty controlled here at uh, yeah ladies and gentlemen 11 and a half kilometers and uh, went down to five just again to climb up at 12 and a half kilometers up to 12 mbit this what you see here is a little painting of my favorites <laughs> don't get me a great artist in this we got an altitude axis uh, you can do uh, whatever you put you will want to put in here let's say it's a hundred <coughs> hundred feet hundred meters hundred yards or whatever you want just a bar where we say it's hundred let's just take this for granted then we got a distance of course then we got you with the transmission in your transmitter or in your goggles your goggles will be here that's you that's a mark here <laughs> and then you can see it's just uh, distance now <clears throat> when you're flying here and you are pretty much ground level then everything is good line of sight looks good and you just cruise around here and feel groovy everything is good now now you come to do, do some range now um, if you're here, let's say at two kilometers, everything is fine. Direct line of sight for the antennas, this is good. Now, let's say you push it a little further. Now we can see what happens. The RF signal will have to travel around or through the vegetation. <coughs> this is referred to as clutter, usually, if I am still right in this. <coughs> and uh, this gets harder the further you get out. So let's say <coughs> you're about here, then you would um, have the tree more and more in your way for the RF signal to transmit through, to get through, yeah. And if you push it a bit far out, then let's say just for here, you see what happens. Other vegetation comes across and blocks more and more the signal. And um, if you go out here, well, yeah crazy hmm. so this clutter and this will eat your RF signal and that's why your signal is dropping over time so we take a closer look at those antennas <coughs> here we got those Voxner ones and the long-range hammers as well as the lollipops which are no name by the way I managed to find out they are produced in a factory in China but I don't know where I will go for it but I really like them have a look at them um, these are pretty good and cheap yeah yeah glad with them so the long-range hammers glad with them too if they don't lie in the plane <laughs> and those not not away with them ah, that feels better but uh, beside below of them let's get back to the story here really uh, somewhere beyond uh, 13 kilometers the story ends because uh, the t1 didn't flew further I just returned home and I saw pictures of that so no we didn't break the signal we have we could have gone further with that perhaps but we didn't and keep in mind it was 700 milliwatts and not 1200 it was 1080p 60 it was default standard a bit rate about 12 no what do I say 25 megabits per second we started off with so yeah mm, it all works out if we take the right antennas what you see now is where the plane returns the nose homewards and uh, what's the bit rate? It's really about 5 megabits per second and as soon as the nose goes homewards it raises up to 11 and maybe 12 and uh, well it stays there. The flight back was a real pleasure to watch. If you look at this sun, awesome. And also what the camera produces. I really like the HDR or the wide dynamic range or whatever does the magic in this walk snail setup. And that's the story so far. I guess um, there has been a lot of infos and maybe something of this is useful for you and your use case. For me it was very important to find out that antennas are the most important things once again. So. Good luck, get out there, get flying and enjoy it, get the right antenna and fly safe. Next time, next time we will look how far the Harrier will go. Stay safe, be seeing ya. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button.
That would be awesome. That would be awesome.